friends are since. I'm sure like many of you of a particular vintage, I had one of the original Nintendo Game Boys, the grey brick DMG things, and I vividly remember going in with my dad to a shop called Argos to pick out a Christmas present. And for those of you not from the UK, Argos was this really weird shop that didn't actually have any stock. It just had, well, it didn't have any stock out on display. It just had this catalogue and you'd go in and pick what you wanted and write down the number and give it to somebody who'd go find it in the back somewhere, which when you think about it now is actually quite a bizarre business model. But either way, I remember going in there with my dad and I had to pick out what I wanted for Christmas and the choice was between the Game Boy or the SNES, I think at the time. It might have been the NES, but I'm pretty sure it was the SNES. And I'm sure my dad wanted me to get the SNES because he wanted to play it when I went to bed. But for whatever reason, I chose the Game Boy and that became one of the formative devices that I used as a kid. Just over 10 years ago now, I was delighted to discover that people were breathing a second life into their Game Boys, specifically by modifying them to allow them to make music better or easier. One such modification was installing a line out so that you could get cleaner audio from the Game Boy. There's also things like installing a clock speed modification so you could get lower bass sounds or thicker bass sounds or whatever. It wasn't just audio modifications though. People were also changing things about the Game Boys to improve on their original shortcomings. For example, installing backlights in the displays. And that's because as a product of its time, the Game Boy had this grayscale dot matrix screen that didn't have any light in it or on it and that made it really difficult to use or to see especially if you're blind like me unless there was like perfect lighting conditions and if you're a kid and you wanted to play the Game Boy at night under your covers this just wasn't possible unless of course you had one of these weird contraptions that had like it clipped onto the top of the Game Boy and had like a lens and then these bulbs inside it not even LEDs but bulbs that kind of lit up the display a wee bit but they were still pretty crap Anyway, the modification community has come a long way and now you can get a whole host of different mods really easily from dedicated Game Boy parts shops. You can get things like IPS screens, which are these newer types of display that you would replace the existing screen with and they give this amazing increase in contrast, clarity, sharpness and all the rest of it. But you can also get things like new manufactured shells. So if you always wanted a glittery pink transparent Game Boy case, but they were never manufactured in that color, now you can probably find one and you can also get matching buttons and all the rest of it. However, sounding like the old bastard that I am, when these modifications were first being explored, none of these options were available and you very much had to do it in a DIY format. You had to buy old broken Game Boys, paint the shells if you wanted a different colour. You also had to figure out the soldering points on your own or follow kind of weird bitmap oh, cobbled together guides that other people who had done it before you had put together or just get help from other people in forums. And that's what I did originally. I was looking through forums like uh, CMO, 8BC.org and a whole host of different places and I learned how to solder and modify electronics by experimenting on Game Boys. It's not something I'd ever done before and so I made a lot of mistakes along the way including um, drilling holes in cases in the wrong places and making holes that were far too big, drilling into my hand and various things like that. As a result, over the years I've collected all these different Game Boys that I've modified in different ways. When you discover that you can have different colour combinations then you tend to be like, oh well I wouldn't mind getting a purple one with yellow buttons and a, a yellow one with green buttons and all that. And so before you know it, you find yourself with quite a few and I think I've got some like 12 Game Boys at this point and they're all kind of in different states of disrepair. Some of them work great and some of them work less great and I have considered going back you know and fixing all the wee bits and pieces but really I'm a bit concerned that if I open them up I won't know what's wrong with them or how to fix it and even if I do getting them back together I remember was a bit of a challenge so that's a project for a future time however people have asked me about these Game Boys because they're always on display up here somewhere like they're always in the background of videos. So I thought I would do a run through to show you the different Game Boys that I've got and kind of what features or what oddities each one has and probably also tell you how they don't work in various ways. So if you're interested in Game Boy mods or chiptune or whatever else, then maybe this will be interesting. 
I should say that I didn't modify all of these. I did modify the vast majority of them, but I think there's one or two which I got early on or which I got from people who'd done specific mods. So I'll, I'll obviously tell you at that point. All right, so I'm going to go through my collection quickly. Uh, there's quite a few Game Boys here, so I don't want to bore you by spending way too long on each one of them. But I'm going to try and kind of go in chronological order, as in when I got them or when I built them or whatever. I've also uh, plugged them in via power so I can check what kind of display and stuff is in it. So first one was this transparent Game Boy here. It's a clear case, one of the original clear cases, I think. And this was one of the first ones that I modified myself. You can see that I put in these orange buttons, which I'm still quite partial to. And I'd always wanted a transparent Game Boy, so this was naturally the first one that I built. I took it out of, or I took the innards out of just an old standard grey one and transplanted them into this. But I put the uh, ProSound mod in here, which is just a mini jack stereo output. And I took the speaker out of this one to give me some more room. I thought I had to do that, but it turns out I didn't really. This has a green screen in it, or a green backlight as you can see, which is quite nice. I believe it's also inverted or biverted, so uh, you basically install a wee chip, which I think is in there at the top. Well, maybe not. Okay, this one isn't biverted, but essentially you can invert the screen when you do the modification and that helps with contrast. But if you want to then invert it again so that the screen is represented the way it should be so that the colors aren't back to front you have to bivert it um, but i don't think i've done this one by the looks of things it's a wee bit scratched up with this front panel and i don't think i've got a protector on it which is a shame up here you can see i tried to drill a hole for some kind of modification and cocked it up uh, so i've covered it up with some red tape uh, that's what that is for if you can see inside you can tell how bad my soldering is but this way um switch at the top you may be wondering what this is for but if i turn it on um Oh, nothing happens at all. But what used to happen with this was that I had different LEDs in. So I had some green LEDs and some orange LEDs and the whole case was meant to light up quite nicely. But um, I think I also cocked up because I put the wrong kind of resistor values in for the LEDs. So they were really dull and pretty crap. And I think this is one that I would probably like to fix because clearly the LEDs need sorted. It needs a new wee screen or a new screen protector since it's all scratched up. And uh, I'm not convinced about the quality of this audio jack either. But this was my first attempt and I don't think it was too terrible for that. So yeah, there you go. Next up we have this one, and this was one I wanted to have a traditional looking Game Boy, but with, you know, a few different upgrades, so I've no idea what colour the screen is in this, so let's see. Oh, so it's a blue colour. Uh, the refresh rate will be a bit weird there. You can hear maybe the, the, the speaker is still intact, so that's nice. You can see from the recording here that this is one of the older backlit screens so it's got the three leds at the bottom which means you don't get quite as um, even a distribution but it still looks pretty cool um i don't know why oh yeah and the older modifications you had to disable the um led for the battery light so that seems to be gone which is a shame this has the original buttons on it but it has these really nice silicon arrow buttons which i like a lot with this case what i did was i took it was really grubby and minging actually so i took it apart and i uh, cleaned it all up it is the original case and i coated it with this kind of um clear varnish which gives it quite a shiny look and it's actually quite nice it held up pretty good although i did this years ago in an old flat and i stunk the place out because it was like spray paint stuff and it's reeking i didn't get a screen protector for this one so you can see how scratched up it is which is a bit of a shame yeah, i'll probably have to replace that at some point although this is one of the original ones so uh, they're harder to find in this you know in nice condition for the other modifications, there wasn't really anything. I wanted to keep this one quite simple, but I put RCA jacks in the top. So the outputs are just, you know, stereo phono outputs. Um, I quite like it because it looks like devil horns or something. But this can be useful for gigs because the mini jack on normal pro sound can get pulled out a lot easier, which is a bit of a nightmare if you're playing a gig and suddenly, you know, the, the bloody audio cuts out, which has happened to me on more than one occasion. 
Next up I have this black one here and it's got a fetching uh, chrome or reflective uh, I don't know what that's called, the glass lens or whatever it is. It's obviously not an original one because they didn't make them like this. It's held up a bit better than some of the others. With this case, I really wanted a black Game Boy. This was an original black case, as you can see. But either way, I tried to keep this quite true to the original as well. I think this has got a red screen in it. Let's see what you can see. Yes, it does. There we go. This is one of the earliest screens because you can tell by the the single LED at the bottom. So it's not the best screen and I find this one quite hard to work with. Actually, it's quite hard to see even in the dark. Um, the screen isn't the most legible, but I think this just looks cool as. The one thing about this that I did, oh yeah, I applied the same treatment to this as the other one. So I cleaned uh, the gray one. So I cleaned it all up and then I sprayed it with that kind of, you know, lacquer to make sure it kind of was a bit nicer and shinier, but it's gotten a wee bit worse for wear. There's a wee bit of, um, you know, scratches on this, so I might need to tidy up at some point. But ideally I would like to fix this up with the screen. I can't remember if this has got a pro sound in it. There aren't any other visible modifications. I've got an LSDJ sticker on the back and just a, a different battery cover, but uh, it might have a pro sound just installed in this, but I suspect that I maybe didn't even do that and all I did was um, uh, leave it so I could use this for writing on with headphones because if you replace the output of this, the headphone output, with a line output then obviously you can't use it with headphones as easily so maybe that's what I did, I can't quite remember. But it was one of the early ones as well. This next one is a bit of a Frankenstein and it was one of my <laughs> earlier attempts at significant modifications. I really love this case. I love the transparent orange, but I tried to do a few different things on this, which didn't necessarily work very well. I do love the color scheme though. I love the yellow and the orange and the, those silicone blue buttons again. I like how the white looks. Unfortunately, that's not silicone. It's just hard um, plastic. This is a few different mods. Uh, I think this was my first attempt at RCA jack actually because you can tell I put them in a really stupid place because it looks fine but then, well, I mean, I don't know if it looks fine but when you try and use it you end up like your hand is on the jacks and I found that I was shorting things out with them so uh, this is definitely one I want to rehouse because uh, I was trying things and I kind of cocked up the case a wee bit. So in future, I would like to redo this with my knowledge of electronics now. You can see as well, I've tried to pack in quite a few things into this and um, not very successfully, I have to say. So I've got double pro sound outs. I've got the RCA and I've got the um, mini jack pro sound here, which was a much more sensible place to put it down there than this monstrosity. However, I also tried to install the clock speed mod uh, that I mentioned earlier, where you basically replace or short circuit the internal clock and put in, a, you know, a different clock chip or a clock module in there that overrides the Game Boy's clock and lets you do cool things with the sounds. But I installed this ludicrous, ludicrously large switch here because I thought it would be cool. But actually, it was just a nightmare to try and fit in. So now it hangs out the side like this, and the knob is in, you know, in place of the speaker. So there's no speaker on this one. Oh yeah, I couldn't really close the case because I cocked up the positioning. But uh, I, I, this doesn't even work actually, I don't think, which is a shame. I'll plug it in and see what kind of backlight's in here. Okay, it's blue as well. Oh, oh the clock does work. Oh, that's a surprise. I can tell by the display when you turn it down, you can see the refresh rate maybe gets really low. Oh well, I didn't think that worked. That's cool. That's good to know. But I like this one a lot. I like the colour scheme probably the most out of all of them, but unfortunately it needs some tender love and care to bring it back to a really good working condition. It does work though. I mean, I use it in gigs and people come up to me and go, oh, can I see your Game Boy? And you're like, oh, maybe don't look at that one because it's a bit, you know, it's had problems. This next one I didn't make. I bought it from somebody in the chip music community and I did so because I really liked the paint job. I just thought it looked amazing. They've done a really good job with it. It doesn't really have any modifications. It might have a pro sound, but I can't actually remember. I don't really use it for recording at all though, so I can't recall. The one thing I don't love about it is the screen. The backlight is pink, which is nice, 
but it's not biverted or inverted or anything and it's actually really hard to read just for regular use so whilst it looks really cool um i don't you know i can use it for a uh, control another synths over the arduino boy which plugs in here but uh, i don't really use it live apart from that because it doesn't have the pro sound as far as i know it's quite hard to read you can see there's a screen protector on this one actually because it's uh, got like plastic rippling off it. So I think longer term I would like to put a pro sound in this and replace the backlight with a nicer screen. But for now this just exists as it is. We now come into the latter part of my Game Boy modification uh, experience where I got much better at doing it. And I went through a phase where I really liked, well, it's not a phase, I still like them, but these transparent cases, which are aftermarket cases, I think, um, but they're made, I can't, yeah, they must be, I mean, they've got the original, or they've got the Nintendo Game Boy stuff on them, which you find a lot of cases you get now won't have, because obviously trademark considerations, but for a while you used to be able to get them printed like this, so I'm fairly sure they never made them in these colours, this must be a knockoff. Either way, whatever it is, I liked these transparent colours. And again, I love these orange buttons, nice and transparent. The uh, blue case or blue lens here, it's a wee bit scratched up. But I think these are glass ones compared to the plastic on the older, um, or more original Game Boys. And that means they're a bit more hard wearing, which is good for me since I tend to trash everything. You can see though, maybe on the screen, maybe not, yeah, maybe not, it's quite hard. The one problem with this is that there's uh, bubbling underneath. So there's some kind of pressure behind the uh, backlight that I've installed and it's causing it to kind of bulge up a wee bit. But it's okay once it's on, you don't really notice it, but it does annoy me and I feel like one day I'm going to have to take it apart. Modification wise, it's just got a pro sound. Uh, mini jack out, kind of straightforward. The backlight I think is orange to match the these. Yes, it is. This is one of my favourite ones and I tend to use this either at gigs or for recording depending on what I'm doing. I suspect this may have an issue with the battery contacts. This is one of the big problems if you're recording with these then you don't really want to use uh, power supplies because it's much noisier but if you use batteries the contacts in a lot of them can be quite mm, hit or miss and I suspect this is one of them where if they're not situated just right, it cuts out. And obviously at gigs, that's a problem. So maybe this is one I haven't used at gigs for a while. But either way, this is one of my favourites. Pulling up the next one. I'll give it a wee dust. You can see this is of the same family. It's basically just the exact same as the other one. It's got the uh, Mini Jack Pro Sound down here. It's got the yellow buttons, hard plastic in this case. It's also got the glass screen there, which again, you can see wears much better. There's not many scratches on this old boy. I can't remember what color the screen is, but going by convention at this time, it was, I'm sure it must be yellow. Yeah, yeah, there we go, yellow screen. And I just love the look of this one. I've just realized that I've put LEDs in this as well. And the idea was to light up the whole case. But as you can see, I clearly didn't do a very good job or diffuse them very well because they kind of just, they don't really light up the case. They just kind of light up a few spots. And that's something I'm probably gonna have to fix at some point because it doesn't look stunningly good. And also it kind of draws more power and they heat up a lot quicker this way. So I need to go back and revisit my internal LED uh, approach, I think. I do use this one live. This one is one of the cleanest builds I've done, apart from the LEDs. Still get the speaker, and I like this a lot. This is one of my live companions. Moving on, we have the other final one in this kind of transparent, or maybe not the final one, but we have another transparent Game Boy here. It has a glass screen, but it needs a wee bit of a clean. I wanted a complete ice white Game Boy, and so this is that. It has glow-in-the-dark UV silicon buttons, which is very nice. By this point, I had kind of got the whole, um, I knew which drill bit to use to drill these, so it looks way cleaner than the, you know, earlier efforts, if you kind of compare them. Hmm, yeah, this one's definitely better. 
there isn't too much else to say about this. Unfortunately, there's a big crack here and you can't really feel it on the top, but it is there and I don't really know how that happened, which is a shame because it kind of ruins the aesthetic a bit, didn't it? But I suspect this is a white screen to go with the theme. Oh no, it's blue. There you go. Oh no, it can be white, I guess, depending on the angle. So this is another, oh, and I've got, I've, oh, I'm obsessed with bloody LEDs. Oh shit, look, aye. So there's LEDs in the back as well. I guess I was obsessed with lighting up my cases at this point, but again, um, it's not the best kind of job, is it? It's just like an LED at the bottom. It doesn't really do very much. So that's a shame. I'll have to revisit this one as well at some point. I do use this one frequently though for recording. I just like it and it seems to be quite reliable. Live, it's another one that I would use because it's quite, it looks quite nice. Can you hear that? Seems like the speaker is making a weird noise. So that's great. That's something else that's probably broken. Fantastic. Oh God, it'll be my dodgy LEDs that I've done it. Just a couple more to go. I have this one, which is a very clean, all pink one. I don't actually remember if I made this or if I bought it. I suspect I probably bought it because it, yeah, if I had made it, there would be a pro sound in there. So I have no idea when I got this or whether it's got pro sound or not, but I just, I wanted an all pink Game Boy because who doesn't? And um, it has nice countersunk buttons. I think these are NES style buttons. They feel really nice. I have no idea what the display is like. I guess we'll find out. Yeah. Uh, blue. White, another white display. A little look blue on the screen. Oh, and it's got the speaker intact. I suspect there might be a pro sound in there, but I would have to check. I've, this was one of the more recent ones that I got, I think, just because it looks really good. You can tell by the bottom, this is a newer backlight because it's got one, two, three, four, four LEDs at the bottom, so you get a much more even coverage. And I believe it's also biverted because even on the screen, the camera screen here, you can tell the contrast is way better. So yeah, this one's just a nice one to use. I don't really think this would be a live device. I'm much more likely to use this live than this. But uh, there you go. Whoop. Finally, we come to this one. Oop, plugged it in. What color is it? Yellow. I found that the yellow screen, oh, and it's also inverted, I think, or biverted, so you can see the contrast there. Again, you can hear the speaker playing up. Can you hear that? I don't know why I'm holding up the camera. I should hold it up the mic. It seems like the power here is interfering with the speaker in a few of them. Uh, that could just be expected, to be honest, from my dodgy soldering. This one, I think, was the last one I ever made. And you can tell because it's definitely one of the cleanest builds. It just looks really nice, and I'm quite pleased with it. It does have a screen protector still on there, so you can see the screen's still got a wee bit of a, a wrinkle, but it's the screen protector, it's not the actual screen. I like the colour scheme. This one's a wee bit different for a couple of reasons. I'm just tightening that jack apparently needs tightened. It has some silicone buttons because they feel really nice, but it also has these glow or LED start and stop buttons or select buttons, which I forgot about. And they, they're kind of ridiculous, but they're also pretty cool. Who doesn't like LED buttons? I wisely by this point seem to have given up on the idea of um, putting LEDs inside the case because it was more hassle than it was worth. However, the thing that's special about this one is that along with the standard kind of mini jack pro sound, I put an analog sync in this. So you can get analog sync boxes, which let you basically send out a clock signal from the Game Boy or put a clock signal into the Game Boy from something like the Eurorack. However, I decided to put it inside so I didn't have to use the box all the time. So this wee jack here sticking out at this point, whoop, is the clock sync and you won't be able to see it maybe very well but there's a wee tiny switch in there which lets me go from input and output and you have to kind of use a wee pin or something to change it because I, I learned from my um you know switch problems in the past not to try and install a huge giant switch even if it did look cool so that is my my new approach to switches the one thing about this which i'm sad about is that the when i was drilling the hole for this the vise I had the Game Boy locked into slipped and you can see 
there's a big scuff around the corner, so that's a shame. But it still looks pretty good, and this is one of my favourite ones, because I just like the way it looks. I don't use the sink a huge amount, but if I do want to use it, then, I mean, this is the one I would use. Now, I mostly have DMG Game Boys, which refers to that style of Game Boy, that dot matrix, the old brick style. This is partly because I just prefer the way they look, but also because the sound quality from these is meant to be way better. However, I do have a bonus, or a couple of bonus ones, and this is a Game Boy Colours. And the Game Boy Colours are really nice because they're, they've got a really nice form factor, they're quite small and portable, but they also have, obviously, a colour screen. And this one, I didn't make, I bought this from a seller on eBay from China, I think, but they specialised in, you know, refurbing these things and they put in an IPS screen. So even though it'll be quite hard to see in this because of the particular setting it's on, it has a really, really sharp, nice, clear screen. So when I just want to sit and work on a song in LSDJ, this is the one that I usually use. I keep it by my bed. And plus it only takes two AA batteries. I never ever record with these. Oh look, I fucked it. Don't panic. <laughs> Brilliant. I never record with Game Boy Colours because the sound is meant to be weaker. Who knows whether it is or not. Uh, whatever. I don't really care. I will buy into that folklore if necessary. Um, keep the chiptune mythology alive. I do have another Game Boy Colour. I can't find it now for some reason. It's probably locked away in a box somewhere but it's a yellow Game Boy Colour and it was, originally you couldn't backlight these very easily or at all, I think. You had to install a front light which basically meant you had to cannibalise a Game Boy Advance. So that actually was one of the other reasons that people didn't really use Game Boy Colours for chiptune was just you couldn't, you know, modify them to the same extent or as easily. I had a yellow one which I did rip out the screen from an old broken Game Boy Advance and I installed it. However, it's just, you know, it was fun to do and it worked well at the time, but this just, the IPS screen, this just blows it out of the water. So uh, that's probably why I can't find it because, you know, it gets no, no use. So that's my collection is, how many do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten, eleven Game Boy DMGs. Is having ten Game Boys excessive? Yes, I suspect it probably is. However, I would say in my defence that these I've been collecting over, over, you know, well over 10 years at this point, and they all do kind of different things, slightly, I guess. I mean, they all definitely have their own problems. And whilst I've tried to sell them, I mean, I have sold a couple of them. I had a red one that I sold a few years ago, but when I try to sell them, even though the Game Boys are, like, kind of worth something, people don't really want to buy, like, um, an already modified Game Boy that somebody else has built. They either want to modify their own one or they want to get like a custom one made with their specifications, which makes sense. So, you know, I mean, I guess they'd be worth something to someday, but I mean, this thing fucking definitely wouldn't with this monstrosity. That's it. Um, any questions, you can let me know. And uh, I, if you've watched this whole video, then God bless you.